Hey everyone, you know, be it jumbo jets that carry hundreds of passengers or cargo aircrafts that haul massive loads across the continents, there are some planes that are built to be massive. So join me for today's video as we take a look through 15 of the most supersized aircraft. Number 15, MIL MI-26. All right, when it comes to helicopters, the world's largest craft is actually a holdout from the days of the Soviet Union. It was first launched in 1977. The MIL MI-26 is a cargo transport helicopter that's used by both private citizens and military personnel. With a length of 40 meters, a height of 8 meters, and an empty weight of 28,000 kilograms, it's an absolutely massive vehicle. And while it may be old, its ability to hold over 13,000 kilograms of weight means that it's still useful today. As a result, it's currently in the militaries of 14 different countries, making it an oldie but a goodie in every respect. Number 14. The Zeppelin Stocken R6 World War I was easily one of the nastiest conflicts in world history, and the Zeppelin Stocken R6 was easily one of the most formidable aircraft to take to the skies during that conflict. This because this is considered to be the largest aircraft to be mass-produced during the war, and by the day's standards, it was a heavy hitter. Coming in at 22 meters in length, 6 meters in height, and sporting a wingspan of 42 meters, it was nearly as large as the gargantuan Boeing B-29 superfortresses of the Second World War, and it stands apart for being mostly made out of wood and fabric. In any case, the plane still holds several records in terms of size, and its memory continues on as a testament to the incredible capacity of German engineering. Number 13. The AN-124 The rapid transport of troops and cargo is vital for any military, and the AN-124 is the go-to rapid transport vehicle of the Russian Federation. Housing a cargo bay that surpasses the size of a basketball court, it's able to carry a maximum load of 150 tons while having a maximum passenger capacity of 88 people, allowing it to fit a lot of soldiers into one flight. Now, to facilitate all of this baggage, it's got two main cargo compartments in addition to numerous smaller compartments in the front and back of the aircraft, with storage space even being available in the nose of the plane. To top it off, the AN-124 has crane winches and other support structures built into it, allowing it to land and unload without external support. As a result, it's no surprise that the AN-124 is seeing a lot of use in the war against Ukraine. Number 12. Scaled Composites Strato Launch When it comes to size, few aircraft are quite like the Scaled Composites Strato Launch. First launched in 2019, it is, as of recording this, the world's largest airworthy aircraft, as it has a length of 73 meters, a wingspan of 117 meters, and a weight of 227,000 kilograms when empty. Nicknamed the Rock, after a giant bird in Arabian mythology, the point of this aircraft is to develop aircraft that could carry large rockets in a way that was convenient, reliable, and affordable. While it originally worked with SpaceX, the decision has been made to exclusively fly the Northrop Grumman Pegasus rocket and a family of its own proprietary launch vehicles, and to date, four flights have been made. As that sector continues to grow, the hope is that these efforts will continue to be ramped up, yet only time will tell whether or not the scaled composite strato launch will be a commercially successful vehicle. Number 11. Antonov AN-225 Mriya Transporting rockets is certainly a tough task, and generally speaking, they can only be safely moved on land. However, the Antonov AN-225 Mriya challenged this assumption due to the fact that it used to move rocket ships by air. First flown in 1988, it was created for the express purpose of transporting Buran-class orbiters, with a length of 84 meters, wingspan of 88 meters, and a weight of 238 tons. And it was so large that it could hold as much as 50 standard cars inside of it. However, after the fall of the Soviet Union, it was primarily used for cargo transport in and out of Ukraine, although this all came to an abrupt end on April 24th of 2022. That's because it was on this date that while sitting in an airfield near Kyiv, the one and only Antonov AN-225 Mriya in existence was destroyed after that airfield was attacked by Russian soldiers, marking an end to its illustrious career. Number 10. The Space Shuttle when it comes to space travel, one of NASA's largest reusable assets was the Space Shuttle. It was first launched in April of 1981. The Space Shuttle was, at the time, the only spacecraft in the world capable of delivering and returning large payloads and scientific experiments to and from space. And due to its reusability, it was able to make a total of 135 flights during its 30-year career. 
Now, in terms of size, the space shuttle wasn't a small aircraft, as it came in at a length of 56 meters, a width of 9 meters, and a mass of 2 million kilograms. It was thanks to its massive size that it was able to carry a lot of stuff on board, with this including a pressurized laboratory known as the Space Lab, and a cargo bay that could transport practically everything needed to run the International Space Station. As such, while it has since retired and is no longer in service, the Space Shuttle truly was a marvel of human engineering. Number 9. The Hindenburg in the early 20th century, few flying vehicles were quite as well loved as the Zeppelin. In essence, these were long cylinder-shaped aircraft that were covered in frames and supported by an internal gas cell. And it was using this design that they were able to do everything from serve as bombers during World War II to rival passenger airplanes during the early days of commercial flight. However, the largest and easily most tragic example of a Zeppelin in action was the Hindenburg coming in at a length of 245 meters and going up to 135 kilometers per hour. It was the perfect vehicle for leisurely trips. However, unlike most Zeppelins, which used relatively inert helium gas, the Hindenburg was filled with highly flammable hydrogen gas due to export restrictions by the United States against Nazi Germany. As a result, when the Hindenburg flew to the United States in May of 1936, poor climatic conditions and a gas leak essentially led to a giant explosion, and the entire aircraft caught on fire. The end result was the complete destruction of the Zeppelin and the deaths of 36 people. And it was thanks to both this accident and several others that by the late 1930s, the Zeppelin had more or less fallen out of use. Number 8. The Boeing C-17 Globemaster III Yeah, as you could probably imagine, the massive presidential limo known as the Beast isn't exactly the easiest vehicle to transport around. After all, due to all of its technical instruments and secret features, it can't just be tossed into a shipping container. And considering that the president often moves from city to city and country to country, it's important that the Beast is just as mobile as he is to make up for the lackluster security vehicles often used in less developed nations. As a result, the Beast currently has its own Boeing C-17 Globemaster III cargo plane, and its cargo carrying stats are pretty impressive. First instated into the U.S. Air Force in 1995, it's got a huge cargo capacity of 77,500 kilograms and regular operating capacity of 71,000. And this plane is able to lift practically anything into the air. This is largely thanks to its four super powerful Pratt & Whitney turbofan engines. And these not only allow the C-17 to carry lots of cargo, but also reach speeds of Mach 0.8 while achieving a range of 4,400 kilometers while doing so. For reference, that's the equivalent of traveling from London, England to Mumbai, India with about 25 fully grown African elephants on board. Yeah, as such, it should come as little surprise that the U.S. Air Force uses this plane quite often. Number 7. North American XB-70 Valkyrie while the United States has made more than its fair share of bombers, the one that stands apart for simultaneously being the fastest and the largest is the North American XB-70 Valkyrie. Developed throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s and first launched in 1964, the bomber was the marvel of military engineering, as despite coming in at a gargantuan 60 meters in length, 9.5 meters in height, and having the ability to carry a 230-ton payload, it was able to travel at speeds of up to Mach 3 at an altitude of nearly 22,000 meters, making it an absolute menace of the skies, at least in theory. You see, due to its speed, the idea was that the Valkyrie would be able to quickly enter the Soviet Union, drop payloads, and then quickly speed off. Given the fact that much slower interceptor aircraft were the best aerial defenses the Soviet had in the late 1950s. At the time of the Valkyrie's development, its design seemed like a good idea. However, by the time it was first flown, Soviet aerial defenses had advanced to a degree where they could shoot down the Valkyrie with relative ease. This was made worse by the fact that in 1966, an accident that involved an XB-70 Valkyrie occurred during a photo op, killing two pilots and further staining its reputation. As a result, only two Valkyries were ever built, and the entire program was shut down in 1969. Number 6. The Airbus A380 while the Boeing 737 may be one of the most well-known names in passenger aviation, the plane that takes the top spot in terms of size is actually the lesser-known Airbus A380. It's trusted by major airlines and presidential jet builders alike. It has quite the following, as it's not only one of the most important planes used by companies such as Qantas, Emirates, and British Airways, but it's also the official plane used by the Saudi Arabian royal family. 
Now, in terms of dimensions, the Airbus A380 has a length of about 73 meters, a wingspan of about 80 meters, and a capacity to seat about 525 passengers. Although, at a maximum, it can seat a grand total of 853. As a result of this large size, it's the world's largest passenger airliner and the only full-length double-decker jet airliner, making it a true marvel of aerospace engineering. First flown in 2005, they were made thanks to $25 billion investment made by Airbus, although this sum was reportedly never recouped, and just a total of 250 were ever made. Regardless, this plane is known for its size and reliability, and is well-loved by pilots thanks to its innovative side-stick control and brake-to-vacate system. This is evidenced by the fact that collectively, these planes have flown over 800,000 flights, carrying more than 300 million passengers since their entry into service. And given the fact that Airbus will continue to offer support surrounding these planes, despite the fact that production has ended, they will likely continue to be flown for the foreseeable future. Number 5. The Largest Hot Air Balloon while hot air balloons may be large, the one that takes the cake for being the biggest of them all is the Cameron Z750. It was created by UK-based company Cameron Balloons. This monstrosity has a combined area of 21,000 cubic meters, and it took a lot of material in order to make it. More specifically, the balloon is made out of 2.8 kilometers of Cameron ripstop and hyperlast fabric. 3.1 kilometers of load tape and 17 kilometers of thread, and when fully inflated, the balloon can stretch to a length of up to 40 meters, and it's strong enough to carry as many as 32 passengers and one pilot. According to Cameron Balloons sales director Nick Purvis, it's the balloon's envelope or main fabric area that's most important. In fact, as stated by Mr. Purvis himself, quote, all passenger balloons have to work hard. The envelopes need to have a long life and operate for much of that time at higher temperatures. This is why the majority of operators around the world insist on fabrics and balloons exclusively used and manufactured by Cameron Balloons Limited." End quote. Now, while such a statement may seem a little boastful, his company's successful manufacturer of the incredible Z750 certainly makes it seem like this could be true. Interestingly enough, it also seems that Cameron Balloons gets some A-level attention from sponsors, too, as Groupon went so far as to pay the company to plaster their logo across this high-caliber balloon. Regardless, I think that no matter what you think about hot air balloons, you've got to agree that the Cameron Z750 would certainly be a cool vehicle to take a ride in. Number 4. Air Force One The President of the United States has his own version of the Boeing 747 that's arguably very impressive. That's because he has two very highly customized Boeing 747-200B series aircraft at his disposal, and features on them are pretty impressive. Sporting a virtually unlimited range due to the fact they can be refueled mid-air, the two planes are also extremely secure, as they have onboard electronics that protect against electromagnetic pulses and coded communications equipment that allow the aircraft to function as a mobile command center in the event of an attack on the United States. Yet, beside the intense security, the plane is also extremely luxurious. That's because the inside of each is composed of about 370 square meters of floor space spread across three stories, with this including an extensive suite for the president that features a large office, bathroom, and conference room. Air Force One also includes a medical suite that can function as an operating room, and a doctor is permanently on call there in order to serve the needs of all on board. If the plane's visitors get hungry, they can rely on Air Force One's two food preparation galleys, which have the capacity to feed 100 people at any given time, to whip up anything from a quick snack to an entire meal. Best of all, when you consider that the plane has separate quarters for the President's advisors and a detachment of cargo planes to provide the President with everything he could ever need, it becomes clear that this plane is both large and luxurious. Number 3. The Boeing 747 Global Super Tanker out of all the firefighting aircraft out there, the one that takes the cake for being the largest in the world is the Boeing 747 Global Super Tanker. It's derived from the same Boeing 747s that transport thousands of passengers across the world every day, and after two years of development, the first super tankers took their maiden flights on February 19th of 2004. Now, these planes come in at a massive 71 meters in length and are powered by four GE turbofan engines. And in tandem, these help the plane carry up to 74,000 liters of water in just one outing. This water is let out on fires with a pressurized liquid drop system, which can either disperse it under high pressure or drop it at the speed of falling rain, allowing the plane to adapt its strategy in response to an on-the-ground situation. Now, thanks to its top speed of nearly 970 kph, the super tanker can make it to any destination within North America in five hours and anywhere on Earth within 20 hours, even after accounting for fuel stops. 
and once it arrives at the scene of a fire, it can travel at 260 kph at a height of 240 meters in order to disperse water over an area of forest that's up to 4.8 kilometers long and 46 meters wide. To top this off, the super tanker also has 14 first-class seats and two bunks for a support staff and additional flight crew, allowing those fighting the fire to hitch a comfortable ride. However, on April 21st of 2021, global super tanker President Dan Rees informed the public that, quote, this week the investors that own the global super tanker just informed me that they've made the difficult decision to cease operations of the company, effective this week, end quote. As such, it's likely that no new super tankers will ever see action again. Number two, the Airlander 10. While most people take trains and planes for long trips, in the future, it may be the Airlander 10 that takes you from point A to point B. Known as a hybrid air vehicle, the Airlander 10 combines aspects of a blimp with those of an airplane to create a very efficient aircraft. More specifically, the Airlander 10 has between 60 to 80% of its weight supported by lighter-than-air helium. However, it uses a combination of aerostatic and aerodynamic lift and four diesel engine-driven ducted propellers in order to get around. The end result is an aircraft that's capable of flying up to 100 passengers at speeds of 130 kilometers an hour, with a range of 7,400 kilometers, and its ability to stay up in the air for five days, giving it quite a bit of flexibility. Many have also noted that the inside of the Airlander 10 is also nicer and roomier than that of a standard airplane, and this is largely thanks to the fact that it comes in at a massive 91 meters in length, 34 meters in width, and 26 meters in height. However, the truly incredible thing about the Airlander 10 is that it's extremely energy efficient. This is because on a trip from Seattle to Vancouver, it emits just 4.6 kilograms of CO2 per passenger. For reference, this is about 12 times less than planes, 5 times less than cars, and nearly 2 times less than a train. If that wasn't cool enough, the team working on the Airlander 10 is looking to instate further improvements. So the hope is to deliver a hybrid electric edition by 2026 and a fully electric edition by 2030. And while hitches still have to be worked out, the hope is these will be up and running by the mid-2020s. And on my end, I just hope that the Airlander 10 ends up being a commercial success. It's just cool. Number 1. The Caspian Sea Monster Throughout the Cold War, the United States and Soviet Union were constantly at odds in an attempt to outdo one another technologically. And while tons of crazy vehicles were made as a result of this competition, few were quite like the Corbel Maquette. Nicknamed the Caspian Sea Monster by American intelligence, the plane was developed between 1964 and 1966, and when it was discovered by the United States in the Caspian Sea, it had American military experts completely shocked. While it would take a while for them to figure out exactly what it was, the aircraft ended up being known as an Ekranoplan. In essence, it was a cross between a boat and a plane, and it was designed to travel at high speeds just above the surface of the water but below enemy radar. This would make it immune to mines, torpedoes, and anti-submarine nets, although the benefits go far beyond defensive capabilities. This is because these types of planes made use of something known as ground effect. In essence, when the aircraft are within a certain distance of the ground, they experience reduced drag because the airflow around the vehicle interacts with the surface below. This effect creates a dynamic cushion of air that can increase lift by as much as 40%, while allowing the aircraft to have much smaller wings. However, the one caveat is that the aircraft must remain close to the surface. So as such, the plane was neither a plane nor a boat, but a mix of the two, and given its eight enormous engines, length of 100 meters, and ability to fly at speeds of 400 kph, it was truly a scary sight for the American military personnel. However, despite its impressive stats, it never served much of a purpose. While initially designed as a cross between a cargo carrier and a coastal defense vehicle, the Soviets never quite got the design right even after a plethora of tests. And when the monster crashed into the Caspian Sea due to pilot error in 1980, the Soviet Union didn't try to recover it. While it since has been retrieved, the future of the plane is currently unclear, although it's been suggested that it may be displayed at a patriotic theme park. I'll see you next time. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.